YouTube, what's up? It's your boy QZ. Welcome back to the Phasmophobia Complete Map Guide Series. Today we are covering Edgefield, everything you need to know about the Breaker Spawns, Cursed Possession Spawns, all the hiding spots, plus more. So enough pitter patter, chitter chatter. Let's get into it, baby. So I am playing on custom amateur settings uh, so that we have all the hiding spots. But the only thing different that's different than regular amateur is I have all of the Cursed Possession Spawns enabled. So we're going to have every single Cursed Possession in this... Uh, in this event or in this video under normal circumstances you won't have that i kind of cover an in-depth look at the settings in my tanglewood video that's the first episode in this series but uh when you first walk in there's three cursed possession spawns you have the mirror right here you have the terror cards and i'm already hearing the coffee cup in in this room so that tells me that this is probably the ghost room anyways uh the music box is going to spawn right here on this table so there's that. If you go in the kitchen... Right. Okay. Uh, in the washroom here, you have the Ouija board. Down in the basement, you have the summoning circle, which is going to be down here through this door. And here it is. I'm going to take a photo. We're not getting any money. I don't know why I'm doing that. but And then the last two are going to be upstairs. If you go into the nursery, the monkey paw spawns right here. And then if you come around the corner into this back right bedroom, the voodoo doll is going to be on this bed. Now, hiding spots. Just like in the Tangwood video, all of your closets are, are, good, are a good place. Um, again, anything that breaks the ghost line of sight is going to be a good, uh, a good hiding spot. So you can honestly hide in this bathroom. Just turn off your equipment. Uh, shut the door, but it's not as reliable as, say, a closet or a locker. Um, now, as far as makeshift hiding spots, if you've watched any of my streams or any of my videos when I'm on this map, what I'll do is, like, I'll start the... Uh, at the start of the hunt, I'll go down to, like, the living room, smudge it, and then run upstairs to this back room, basically giving myself as much space from the ghost as possible. And then instead of hopping in the closet, because, as I said in the Tanglewood video, uh, I never play with hiding spots on, uh, just for the XP boost, but, uh, I will hide right here, uh, because very seldomly the ghost will come to this corner. Now, there's a couple other spots that you can, that you can hide in. If you don't want to go all the way upstairs, you can actually, this one isn't as reliable, but you can come into this room, in the dining room, and hide, say, like, right here, but like I said, it's not as reliable. Another good spot is obviously going to be downstairs. You have a uh, couple lockers here. And then if you get into a bind, you can really just kind of finagle your way down here into the basement in this in this room. As I said in the uh, in the Tangle video, anything that breaks the ghost line of sight is going to be a good hiding spot. Now, you can also hide like here and do a yokai test. So like sit here with your flashlight on. If the ghost comes down the stairs and it uh, and it keeps going up the hallway instead of coming uh, in here, then you're more than likely dealing with a yokai. You can also hide like here, but it's not as reliable. So that's what I would that's what I would suggest. But yeah, Edgefield is a pretty small map despite it having a basement and a second story. There's really not too much to it. But yeah, now I forgot the breakers. The breaker is either going to be, there's two spawns on this map. You have the breaker spawn, which in this case, uh, it's going to be here in the garage, which speaking of the garage, you also have two uh, lockers here. Uh, you can't loop around this car, unfortunately, but uh, that's okay. And then the only other potential spawn is down in the basement, and then it's going to be in this utility room where the summoning circle is and it is going to be on this wall okay and since this is custom and i'm not getting any uh any money for it i think that's uh i think what we do do <laughs> is we find the the totems for the blood moon event now because this is the blood moon event uh it does make it a little bit harder to see but we are actually pretty close we're, we're trucking right along. Oh my, oh my, oh my freaking Jesus, dude. Oh my God. Hello? That was terrifying. 
jacuzzi needs new pants cause he just soiled his. I, I did. I did. Please bring me my brown pants. Okay, so only two totems. Let's see what our other uh, objectives are. Capture a photo of the ghost. I missed my opportunity. Have no fear. I have a way to do it. I mean, dude. Ran Ban Banshee something. I don't fucking know. Okay. I have, we have a way to do this. I think I just tripped the breaker. Very mad. My sanity. It's not working. Okay. Well, the ghost is probably going to hunt. Yep, it's hunting. How you doing? Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. The ghost is fast. I'm dead. Why do you hate me? Oh, I didn't even get the ghost photo, dude. I got a picture of the freaking kitchen. Very nice scenery. Jesus. Okay. By and large, dude, that's... uh. That Where's the ghost? There was no ghost in the death screen. Excuse me? I don't even know what it was. I feel like it was like a banshee. Oh, it was a mimic. Of course it was. Welcome back. Of course it was. Well, nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And if you're a new player and you want to find out how to easily identify or roll out every single ghost, you can check out this video right here. Or if you didn't catch the Tanglewood episode where I cover every single thing you need to know about Tanglewood, you can check out this video up here. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. All right.